Okay, at 6.30, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Do we have any additions to the agenda? I have one. Okay. We, the van, I don't believe, is returned. He was there this morning, but he is okay. not there now. We have had a van camping yeah. in our park and ride lot. Yep. Um, I did reach out to BFP and to get an email back this afternoon. Um, that, ironically enough, our contact, um, Bill Warner, had actually spoken to the, this person about a month ago to let him know that camping was prohibited. I received a call from the neighbor. There's just been some behavior. That... This is just the additions to the agenda yes. part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. We'll just, yeah. I just yeah. saw the van there myself. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about it okay. somewhere here. Um, review of minutes, August 22nd. I have a couple of suggestions. On um, page one, the designation of town delegate to the 2022 VLCT annual meeting. I would like by unanimous consent to find that the motion read to nominate me as a town delegate to the 2022 VLCT passive and verb annual meetings. They're all part of the same group of organizations and they're all being held at the same time in the same place. So PASIF is spelled P-A-C-I-F, it's all caps, and VERB is all caps as well as V-E-R-B. Forgive me, what does PASIF, what's the acronym? PASIF is our, I don't know what the acronym is, Property it's our insurance. insurance. Okay. Property cash, cash insurance. Okay. okay. And VERB is an organization that I don't recall having gone to annual meetings of before at the shindig. So one of my tasks is to figure out what verb is and what we might want to do at their annual meeting. Um, is meeting singular or plural? Uh, 20. Thank you, it's it's plural. Three, the, the open and close, three separate meetings. And then the other one is on page four. Under the discussion of town management in light of COVID-19, um, I don't know if we have, I didn't go back and check to see if we have any sort of standard language about what, basically no action taken, but a little bit more explanatory than that. Um, I, I said something like, there will be no change in town office procedures or municipal ordinances. So it could probably be phrased more felicitously, but just something to indicate that we considered doing something and decided not to. Anything else by anybody else? I would move that we um, approve the amendments with, excuse me, approve the minutes with those amendments proposed by Carl. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. I'd also like to say, I really appreciate the minutes that you're addressed. Yes, I agree. They're really, really yes. good. Thank yeah. you so much. You're a treasure dealer. Really Glad we found you. I can, I can do it for you also. Well, that's nice. Uh, okay, so minutes are done. Public comments. Uh, do we have public up there? No, 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 no comment from the peanut gallery. You, you all look great, though. Thanks. Okay. Who's the person? Is that was no one Scott has. That was oh, Scott. Oh, okay. No, I thought that. No one else there? Okay. There he is. Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 640. Conversation with East Montpelier Funding Request Study Committee. And... So the total last year was 23,000. The vote on the floor cap is 25. So either going to have to take something out or keep it below 25. <laughs> yeah. How how many members of the the committee are planning to be here tonight? I don't know. I only, I, see, I only see one. 
One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we can't hear you. You're muted. Sorry. Yeah. I know Paul had RSVP'd that he was coming. But we okay. have it listed as 640, so people may not be on yet. Okay, so we could fit something in, maybe wait five minutes. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're yep. Okay. Um, let's see what's short. Not ARPA. Uh, discussion on bank transition and monthly financial reports. No. Um, request for board to send letter of support for capital region dispatch and handling. Oh, that that may not be for. Yeah. And, and we need we okay. need visitors for that. One. Okay. Yeah, that's not going to be quick. Yeah. How about discussion on town management in light of COVID-19? <laughs> that should be short. Yeah. yeah. Or not. It usually is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, does, does anybody want any changes to the current situation? No, I just want to uh, take the opportunity to mention that the Omicron boosters are available right now, or, yeah. or it should be, according to what I was told last week. And that, uh, as I mentioned before the meeting started, uh, the state, in addition to being able to go to Guineas and other drugstores, um, the state has a number of places where you can get walk-in clinics, and the closest one to us is up on Airport Road in Berlin, so that's available. Also, I want to uh, call your attention to, and I think they're all free, um, I want to call your attention to my post on Front Porch Forum last week saying that if you've got a COVID at-home test kit that says it's expired, it may not be because the FDA has looked at the efficacy of these again and extended between three and six months, I think, the uh, best buy date for, for these or, or expiration date for these. And the Front Porch Forum post has a link uh, to the FDA page where you can look for the specific brand that you have. But other than getting that information out there, I don't have any, any comments. Yeah, they're also recommending you take your flu shot and then you get the COVID mm -hmm. shot. Is what yeah. I heard the other day. Okay, that's yeah. what I intend to do. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, <laughs> tomorrow morning. Um, so I think that does anybody else have anything mm -hmm. to say about town management in light of COVID 19? No, nope. yeah, no, okay. So that takes care of that item. Now we do, we got two minutes left. We do have the addition to deal with. I won't take very long. The addition being the band that's been parked there off and on. Oh, yeah. I would like to add signs. Mm -hmm. um, I've reached out to the town of Waterbury in response to BSC's email to me because I think we should not only prohibit camping, but also loitering um, because I think that that becomes a sticky situation. Someone, mm -hmm. yeah. what does camping mean? Is hanging out all day there with your folding chair and reading next to your van plugged into the electrical outlet constitute camping or not like what defines camping so right. i've reached out to the town manager of waterbury um, for the suggestion from bsp to get an example of what their latest sign is mm -hmm. we have one sign i walked over there today um in the parking lot it's in the far corner the complete opposite corner where this person has been parking if they don't round the corner they wouldn't even see that sign mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some more so, signs, but the sign you're going to change the verbiage on the sign because the I think we need to add signs at each near each pole with where there's electricity present because I think that that's what's happening. For yeah. parking, they're getting power um, off of off of the pole. Okay, um, so you're suggesting we take the same language, or you you don't? You know I would like to see what Waterbury has, okay. and I can bring that back to the board yeah. because yeah. I think it merits considering. And this was the recommendation for Vermont State Police mm -hmm. that we consider adding a loitering um, aspect good idea. because yeah. our sign does not state that today. Right, mm -hmm. and I've seen the person over there camping. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. It was an issue exactly. I was about yeah. to bring up, and then and ask, you know, because honestly, I don't know what's mm -hmm. sometimes permissible or not. Um, and I was going to, it was starting to make me a bit uncomfortable, mm -hmm. given that I leave here a lot of times at night alone um, after these meetings. So, um, but then they left, but then we're back and they, they were there this morning. Left. They left when I think because the lawn maintenance crew was here. So I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. There's also been some issues with trash being just thrown down in the gully mm -hmm. over there in addition to public urination that has been noticed. So. Oh, geez. There are some other challenges with it as well. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, well, we we didn't build it to be a camping park. Correct. Um, I I just want to be careful that we don't put up any signs implying 
that it's prohibited to park and ride and, and leave your car overnight. Sure. Like, like I can imagine people uh, getting together for a hike in the White Mountains, leaving one car here and coming back a few days later. I don't want to prohibit that. Well, I think the definition of camping would be that you're residing in your car right. overnight, which is not that. Right. Yeah. So, so to me, that would be a, a difference. And leaving a car overnight, I agree with yeah. you. The sign does not state that that is not right appropriate. And do um, we know what an abandoned an abandoned vehicle well, is? Well, I. I that sign was existed predated yeah. me, so I have yeah. no idea how you may have defined or not defined that. Yeah. So, okay. that so you'll look into some signs. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, so that took care of the addition, and now we are at <clears throat> six forty. <clears throat> so, conversation with East Monthly of Funding Request Study Committee. We've got Kate here, I believe. And Lindy, if I walk in. What's that? <laughs> so we have two members of the committee here. Um, and what's that? Oh, we have another one too. Oh, we have a whole bunch. Yeah. Very good. Um, so the application packet, packet will go out to 35 plus organizations by September 23rd, the due date, October 21st. Committee report will likely be presented to the board at the second December board meeting. So We've got to set the ground rules. Basically, what we said in the past was had to keep it under twenty-five thousand. Uh, last year, twenty-three six six six. So we're almost up against the cap. Um, so either one something will be removed that will be voted on separately, or you're not going to be able to increase much. Five percent would be still underneath. But um, so, what do you think? We don't really know until you get the request. The requests are generally up. Mm -hmm. um, and as a committee, what we've done is looked at all of them mm -hmm. and managed to stay below. Mm -hmm. But I think we've always, maybe not always, but said we could come back if something came yeah. up that we thought should be removed because right. it's got to push you over. Yeah. Um, like we've done with some of the bigger organizations in the past. Right. So you've got 5% you can work with, which is still going to give you under 25,000. But yeah. I would suggest that you do just what you just said is if there's something that needs to be taken out to make room for something else, then just come back to the select board and see how that plays out. Okay. Yeah. So we made the shift at town meeting mm -hmm. from a $10,000 vote on the floor cap to $25,000. I don't remember exactly when, 2003, 2005, something like that, yeah. And given inflation, 25,000 is significantly less than what it was at that time. Uh, have you guys talked about revisiting that? No, I think okay. that, that's more of a town issue than a funding committee issue. Okay. That's a blanket, that 25,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so no, we have not. But all that does really is if inflationary pressures are put upon every item, it's going to push it up, but we still have the discretion to move a big item out. We right. did. Yeah. So, and we did it 10,000, but this, um, to change it would be if it, if it's like worth $15,000 now in 2003 dollars, then maybe it's time to take another look at that. I think that would probably be a town meeting. That's a town we meeting. Have a town meeting again, right. It would have to be voted on. Yeah, it would have to be meeting. voted on. The question is, does the funding request committee consider itself to have some expertise in the area to make a recommendation? I don't. No. Uh, there's other people on no. line, but we stayed within that 25 sure. minutes and only by moving out things like the senior center. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and maybe, maybe you just want the select board to make that decision. You don't want us to put you on the spot. But yes. If, <laughs> well, it doesn't, that's fine. it doesn't hurt to move an item out of the no. mat of the mass vote because sometimes it spurs on discussion of that single item. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically the reason that that was done years ago is because all those little items were taking up so much time. It made sense to lump them together and, but to take something out to keep it under the 25,000 isn't a big ask really, no. I don't think. So, I mean, we can discuss it as, we, as you get more requests, 
It's just yeah. worn separately. Yeah, just worn yeah. separately, you know. So and we don't have that many items on the town meeting. It doesn't seem like that that's going to overburden anybody. But I guess we can see when you get the requests in and see where that heads. Yeah, that yeah. works for me. Yeah, it works for me too. I don't know if anybody online has anything to add. Paul yeah. has a thumb up. Sounds good. <laughs> anybody else have any more questions about that? All right. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for your work. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, uh, yes, I guess that's it on that. And the computer, commuter bus request for will present requests directly to select board in an upcoming meeting. That's standard procedure as far as that stuff goes. All right. Anybody have any more questions on that? Nope. Okay. Nope. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. So we're still a little bit early. Um, and we have people coming in for the capital region dispatch enhancement at seven, perhaps. So how about going to discussion on bank transition and monthly financial reports? So the situation here is that People's United um mm -hmm. is now m and t the transition has not been very smooth um so we actually ironically enough did manage to get a copy of our bank statement um just this afternoon um but uh unfortunately reporting has been delayed which delays us to do our monthly reporting so um that's the gist with us so as soon as we can get reports from the bank, then the standard monthly reporting package will be done and presented to you at the next select board meeting. Okay. It's been a bit of a messy transition. So. Right. It's looking better. Huh? It's looking better. What? M the transition is coming in. Not yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> okay. This then is three week and, and it has not gone well so far. Oh, okay. So. Mm -hmm. We may be uh, manually entering and pay tomorrow into the system. Oh, geez. So, yeah. Paying people out of petty cash. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that we need to know about that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. Um, so the next item might take a few minutes, but that's okay. We've got time. Discussion on the role of elected auditors. Um, this has come up before. Is that something that the auditors were wanting to be here for? I don't know. I have not brought this up to them. Okay. Honestly, that's part of why I'm bringing this up to you. Okay. I'm not sure what can okay. and okay. should be discussed with them. It appears as though this was addressed by the board in November mm -hmm. um, of last year. But what I'm hearing in my discussion with at least one auditor in particular contradicts what I see in the minutes from that November meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm confused. Okay. So I'm okay. coming to the board because I I have already talked to the LCT. I know there's no direction I can provide mm -hmm. to these elected positions. So I'm seeking board advice um, on essentially how do we, other than creating the town report, I'm a bit confused as to what the role of the elected auditor is mm -hmm. as it relates to the town. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry. We've thrown this around before, made no progress. So um, I tried to push it to a vote by the town, but that wasn't very well received. So we need to study this thing and get it fleshed out and figure out exactly what we're talking about. You well, probably yeah. considered, go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering whether you two are on the thing. same page. Yeah. Uh, what I hear Gina saying is we have elected auditors. Uh -huh. What do they do? Yeah. And I think what you're addressing is do we want to have an elected auditors or not? No, no, no. I want to find out what they do because okay. I, I had a lot of pushback. Oh, we're doing this, this, mm -hmm. and this. Okay, we can't get rid of you if you're doing all this X, Y, Z, but we don't know what X, Y, Z was. And part of my source of confusion is when the external auditors were here, Sullivan and Powers, the material misstatement, as I understand it in my discussion with Chad Hewitt in last year's audit, is because they assume that the elected auditors were performing a monthly review of the bank reconciliation. Right. They unfortunately did not review them until the end of the year, which did not mitigate any risk of fraud occurring throughout the year. Mm -hmm. right. So the lack of understanding of the scope of what the elected auditors are doing 
could continue to result in issues like this in evaluating the town's internal controls. May I try to summarize some of the history? Or did you want to jump? I was just I just want to say quickly that um I, we should have a policy on what the auditors do, but the auditors, you know, you already know, you've talked about it before. They statutorily mm -hmm. they they review the you know our books again and 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 look for any discrepancies and then there's a report, just like the external auditors. Do, mm -hmm. but they're they don't have any other role to to deal with it, ongoing internal um budgeting or, or spending spending money or anything like that mm -hmm. so the only reason they're doing it is because there's no policy that says they can't do it well why are we allowed you know, there when i have one auditor that is in the office on a rather regular basis she has indicated that she's supposed to be reviewing the warrants before they come to the select board meeting that so I'm getting some really mixed right. signals here on what that role is. Okay. So yeah. I'm asking, how do we proceed with getting a bit of definition around the scope of, of this position? Okay, may I take a shot at that? So yeah, you're absolutely right. The um, the November 15th mi uh, minutes that uh, the statute say that uh, the auditors conduct an annual audit, report their findings to the townspeople, as you said, John. And uh, beyond that, then we can invite them into a role in day-to-day -day operations, but we're, it's not incumbent on us to do that. So historically, we had an auditor named Dave Grundy who uh, helped us reviewing the warrants each week, uh, each meeting, and did an excellent job on it. And then when he left office or died, uh, then no, nobody did that uh, from the auditors after that. And there, was, there were other routines uh, started and became a source of conflict last year when one of the auditors uh, wanted came in right before a select board meeting and uh, asked our town manager, uh, "Can I see that the stuff for the warrants?" And you know, she had no role in looking at it before it came to us, and, uh, and he didn't want to do that, and that led to, to some conflict. Um, so what we decided was, uh, as I recall that there wasn't going to be a role for the auditors in preparing the warrants. And uh, I don't recall exactly what we said in terms of these monthly um, monthly statements, but you know, we can say one way or the other, yes or no, on whether we want them to be doing these monthly audits. Uh, maybe we have enough financial firepower just on staff that that's the way to do it. Well, that's one challenge that I do run into. My background is rather heavily audited. So when I ask questions, mm -hmm. it's, it, there's just a, a lack of understanding. And plus, there tends to be, I think one reason you got some pushback from speaking with people that have worked with the town previously was because it's the uh, expectation that people drop what they're doing and immediately respond. And that's also not how auditors, either internal in yeah. corporations or external, typically conduct themselves with their with their partners um in, in the finance organization. So, you know, I again I, I think there's a benefit to the role or potential. I just don't know how we get definition around that. But, but a lot of my understanding was a lot of towns have already eliminated this. They have. Yes. So the current treasurer has no experience of working with elected auditors. Right. So, so I can't leverage anything where, there. That's where I was coming from previously. <clears throat> it was like this is unnecessary and perhaps we should not have elected auditors because sometimes it's just more of a pain than it's worth not plain English that just wasn't going to work in this office but, well, but we never we never get any further than that well I think one challenge you have is I think at least the person I'm dealing with does not have a background in finance nor auditing so it you know I yeah. think there is you know a bit of a lack of understanding of what even that role mm -hmm. entails so yes you're right i mean in the elected positions it's not like yeah there's a resume per se supporting why yeah. the person was elected yeah, yeah. into that position of course right <laughs> and i think the town has transitioned from um elected people yeah which you never really know what their background is they just elected into the position to professional services being provided for both you know for, for the treasurer's position which is really a business manager now and and town administrators also an accountant. So I, I don't see why there should be a, a, a need for having external auditors. I mean internal auditors. External do that. Doesn't she do the town report? Isn't that part of it though? Yes, that's the main function of the yeah. auditors. That is that is what's uh, defined as the annual audit and report yeah. of their findings. Okay. And that was convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And they do a great job for 
you know, the, the one person who's can, responsible can, for it does. You can still hire them to do it. Yeah, but towns will have them like yeah. Randolph, which is where current treasurer is from, it's outsourced. That's yeah. mm -hmm. But okay, so where are we though? I mean, do we want to start defining duties for them or do we want to start thinking about um studying the need or lack of need? <laughs> or another way of putting it is would Sullivan Powers look favorably upon it if our elected auditors actually did do the monthly audit? I've reached out to him twice and he has not responded to me. When he was here, I asked him that, mm -hmm. um, though not as very directly as I asked in my email. Mm -hmm. And he, I usually when external auditors arrive on site, they request to talk to the people they want. There was no request made mm -hmm. of anything from the internal auditors from the external auditors as it relates to the audit. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in addition, to, we may not get that input from them, judging from what you've said, but internal or amongst the group, um, whether we want to uh, determine whether we want to extend the powers or the authority of the auditors beyond preparing the monthly report. It seems like that they've been acting on kind of what their um, historically practice has been. And if we want to pull back on that, you know, we should clarify that if that's what we want to do it seems like it's been hit or miss on it's yeah really their role has been hit or miss. yeah and, and hearing you say that judith real it makes me realize that i left out an important part that mm -hmm. bruce would have given of the history and that was his insistence was that when dave grundy was doing the work in helping prepare the um uh, the financial documents for the select board meeting then he was not doing that as an elected auditor. He was doing that as um, somebody that the town asked specifically to do that. Well, we're paying him to do it. Yeah. Oh, well, we pay the auditors anyway. We yeah. pay the internal auditors. Yeah. 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 So that was a distinction that was important to him. So I, I think yeah. um, maybe we could craft a policy that says that outlines what the auditors do for the town of East Montclair mm -hmm. and we'll vote on it. Mm -hmm. Or do we study the fact, do we need them or not? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't too much fun going down that street last time. No, but we'll vote with one. Like you said, it's a combo, or you need an expert? Well, I think the psych board has a right to make a policy. Well, it does. It's one of the roles of the psych board. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I, I guess I'd take that and refine it a little bit because they are other elected officials. And you know we don't have any direct authority over them, but the policy can be, to what extent and in what role we invite the auditors to become part of uh, processes that are not statutorily part of their duties. Right, because they're no different than it would be any other citizen who wants to come in looking Correct. for us. Yeah. Thank but you. I'm just wondering how well that's going to work in this office where we already have quite a few qualified people. Right. That's why we I'm wondering. Need them. Right. But, but the reason it didn't go well when we made the proposal or I was a little bit behind the proposal, but Bruce was too. It didn't go well because it was just sprung on everybody. So we have the opportunity now to figure it out, whether we do want to put it on the warning or not. And if we want to keep the auditors, then we would define their duties. But I'm not so sure Gina and the other people in this office really need that kind of oversight by people that don't even know what they're doing. You can still have the auditors. No, no, I don't care. We, I, I think we're talking. I don't think we're talking about. I think we all agree that there is an opportunity for discussion on whether they can and should do duties other than or fulfill duties other than preparing the annual report. Mm -hmm. So I think, and if if we as a select board come to an agreement that, well, golly, we have a very professional staff right yeah. now uh, you know um and we don't need internal auditors to do some of the functions that we asked them to do in the past then we can right define that and then the only thing that they would have would be the statutory statutory yes. duties and then we wouldn't i mean if we're comfortable with them preparing the annual report we don't need to go to the town meeting and ask the voters hey you want yeah. should we keep them or not keep them yeah what say you yeah that's true that we could just define what their, the, role what their role is 
and we don't have to eliminate it because they do the town and forest farm. So is it hard, if we were to eliminate it, just out of curiosity, is it hard to find somebody that would do the annual report if we didn't have the auditors? They put it together, is that what they do? They take all the information and put it together in a book? That's yeah. what Deb does. Yeah. I think, uh, as I say, the town I came from, we contracted it out. And there's lots of, I mean, there's ample people that would do that. That's I, I, I hate to, I mean, we are living in a time when it's harder and harder to find volunteers to do anything. Yes. And, we, and Deb has for, uh, what a couple decades now yep. put together the town report uh, as basically a volunteer and done an extra. It's not a volunteer. No, she, she gets she paid, paid and, but... and Deb's getting paid. I mean, I do. I review okay. the payroll. She's getting hours in. Okay, all the time. So I stand yeah. corrected, but she's a, yeah. a town person who has put a lot of enthusiasm into this. She takes. <laughs> And she and, does a but good you job. can still hire her, but it doesn't have to be part of her role. Right. Yeah. You can just you just hire, you're already hiring. Yeah. You're that's currently required anyway. So right. you just do that. Exactly. I, I'm just thinking that more people in here that don't really know what they're doing, and we have professional staff in here now that we're spending good money on and they're doing a great job. Do they need that? Do they need to have internal elected auditors? So I would like to hear what so Sullivan and Powers have to say about that before we make any decisions. But tonight. I think we could say by consensus of the select board, maybe, uh, that until we hear from Sullivan and Powers, uh, we don't want our elected auditors to be involved in any way in the internal town finances. And we will, after we hear from Sullivan and Powers, we will work on crafting a policy about how we would like, if we would like to invite them in. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it does kind of. And, and what do you think? Because you're. Well, I mean, when I spoke to Sad when he was here, he did not indicate there was any reliance on that was when I got clarity on the material the statement and he yeah. kind of said that as an example. I don't I don't think that they rely upon that as it relates to internal controls. I think that's probably one reason I'm not getting the response from the two emails I sent him to ask mm -hmm. him. My question to him was, what, if anything, do you rely upon the internal auditors for as it relates to your testing and the annual audit for the town? Right. Um, because I'm just trying, again, I'm just trying to get an answer to that question because yeah. I, I I just have conflicting information and I kind of get confused any every time I have a conversation. And then the examples that are brought up tend to be from 10 to 15 years ago of issues that were occurring. And I prefer to live in the world that we're in today, yeah. not things that were going on 10 to 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that's so when I do hear from Chad at some point he will respond as it relates to our audit then I can certainly let you know yeah I know when he was here again he did not request to speak with them in any way there were some conversations because an internal auditor walked through the the room um but and I know that based on some of that you know it, it there's definitely been a lot of questions coming at me, but when I ask for clarification, when I ask for scope of work, then it seems like the, the conversation ceases and doesn't ever go anywhere. But it seems like you're in the best position to judge whether we need them or not. I mean, you actually are, you're here. And, and you have like a lot back. To manage, like if they were to go and look at everything every week, is that, if there's a professional means of that occurring, no. Um, if typically lifts are provided, deadlines are agreed upon. I mean, that's the way it works with both. I've dealt with both internal and external auditors. So there's always a list, a request list, but that's not the way that I've heard that things were done in the past. Um, and I know there was already one request made and the town clerk did tell me to feel free to share this example that the town clerk would need to be audited or excuse me, interviewed as it relates to her job. And when she asked for some clarifying points on that, it was confusing what came back. And then Rosie said, well, if you were asking me about my cash handling procedures, I understand that. So that came to me a bit of a, as a complaint because frankly, the staff is drowning right now. We're all trying to figure out a lot. So adding to our plate and adding confusing, unnecessary conversations is not something that needs to happen. That's, that's what I think too. No. So as long as things are done in a professional way, right. Communication happens, and again, I've asked for things in writing. If you're making requests, then I need things in writing. So, and then nothing comes. So then I'm not really sure what we're supposed to be doing or not. Sullivan and Powers had reviewed the town of Hardwick books uh, as internal auditors since 1988, and um, they've never used anything from the from the elected auditors. I would find it hard to believe that so an auditor would simply because 
they're not unless you're dealing with CPAs that are conducting right. the internal audit. I yeah. would find it hard to believe that they would rely upon any testing. That Absolutely. So the reason I keep bringing up Sullivan and Powers is because, as, as you say in the memo to us, that Sullivan and Powers uh, said that the material weakness in the prior audit um, was because they expected the elected auditors to be reviewing bank reconciliation on a monthly basis. They were told that was what was happening. And, yeah. and they weren't. But maybe the solution to that is just to tell them, no, we have another procedure. This is how That's we're right. going to do the maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So who would that person be then? Here? Um, well, the municipal assistant does not have access to, okay. um, to the bank account. Okay. Right. So, and right. even if we decided to change that at some point and mm -hmm. give her access, then we would likely remove the town clerk's access and then review, review the bank records. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we, I'd like to end the discussion now. Okay. Uh, but I would, I want to hear from you again, Gina, about this. Yeah, I will let you know. Okay. I hear about and I think it was a good discussion we had on tonight. And we'll keep moving forward. Okay. And I just want to check in. I had proposed that we say the board consensus is that uh, until we put together a policy, uh, we are not inviting the elected auditors to be part of the day-to-day uh, -day financial uh, no. administration of the town. Yeah. Do, okay. do, we, do we agree on that? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You good? Yeah. Okay. I think we have our... I think we do. East Montpelier okay. Fire Department request for board to send letter of support for capital region dispatch enhancement. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Have a seat if you want. Oh, I can stand it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, you're on board. We, we don't represent East Montpelier Fire Department. My name is Joe Alters. I'm the deputy fire chief for the city of Barry, but I'm also the uh, first vice president for capital fire mutual aid. This is uh, Chief Paul Saruti of the Woodbury Fire Department. He's also the chairman of the uh, communications committee for capital fire. Okay. So why we're here is just an informational meeting. Basically it's to bring you up to date on the radio system. And a little background on that is that back in 1990, uh, Senator Leahy had gotten an earmark uh, grant or a federal earmark to, to put in the uh, radio system that's currently today. That makes it about 30, 32 years old. Um, the current antennas on the uh, mountaintops, there's a couple of things we were up against. Mass, glass, and distance. Mass means buildings and mountains. Glass means it's hard to get into buildings. And distance is the distance between the antennas. So a lot of times right now, uh, if you were on the fire scene and you were to key the portable radio to you're talking to dispatch, you can't get dispatcher because it's just crazy. Um, it's the distance, it's the weakness, it's a uh, narrow banding that was mandated by the uh, federal government. So one of the other things that we're having issues with is that those uh, transmitters and antennas are all 30 plus years old and we can't find parts for them anymore. So we've been working approximately 15 years and trying to figure out how do we upgrade the radio system. One, to make it safer for the firemen and uh, EMS folks. And two, how do we perpetuate it? So we've been uh, part of the uh, governor and the commissioner of public safety group to figure out how we can improve uh, the radio systems in uh, Vermont and especially here in central Vermont. So um, I participated in multiple uh, work groups and also the formulation of uh, state funding grant for money. Basically the state has an attrition rate the state dispatching system has a trigger rate of about 80%. And so they're not going to be able to sustain dispatching for the 110 agencies that they currently do. That's fire, EMS, and a, a few police agencies. So the governor had commissioned, the commissioner said, listen, how are we going to do this? So they had set aside about $11 million in the budget to facilitate uh, regional dispatch centers. So right now, uh, East Montpelier is dispatched by uh, the, town, uh, the city of Montpelier. Um, the city of Montpelier and the city of Barrie uh, 
created a redundancy between them. So everybody knows both cities flood. But having this redundancy in continuity operations, it allows us to have seamless backup for each other. So we've uh, put in a uh, fiber optic cable, went through, and so now it's just a push of a button and they can dispatch. So that redundancy really doesn't take place anywhere else in the state, including state dispatch at ESP. So as we were going through and having our uh, meetings with ESP, uh, Terry LaValle uh, was very interested in what we were doing. He actually agreed that we, when Barry Montpelier changed their consoles, that they would plug in and become a tertiary dispatching. So it would go either way. So for some reason, if both our dispatch centers went down, the state could pick up over for us and vice versa. So that created a, a huge uh, incentive for us to be able to push forward. And we, uh, through Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, funded a uh, study, a regional study that went through and said, okay, how can we improve the radio system? How can we make it better and safer? And how can we balance it? in the best interest of all 20 communities. So we went through and they said, okay, they drafted up a 117 page plan that said uh, changing all the towers into a simulcast system, would cut the radio traffic, we will put ourselves on our own frequencies. So right now the dispatchers have huge issues with um, Canadian traffic, mainly the garbage country companies and the cab companies. One of the other problems we have is that up at, um, up in the islands, up in the uh, Isla Mott and all them, they have a 200 watt transmitter that just blow them out of the water. And sometimes if you're pretty high, you can hear them and it drowns us out. So our responders can't communicate, especially in the peak of the summer or in the change of the equinox from fall to winter. So when the leaves go, it really becomes strong. So we developed a system and basically the governor said, listen, one of the parameters of this grant is that we have to come up with a way to perpetuate. <laughs> we don't want you to come back in 10 years. So Capital Fire, with the help of Manager Sheffler, uh, Town of Waterbury, came up with a funding proposal. And basically, it, as part of the package that we've applied to the grant, uh, the state for this uh, federal, uh, excuse me, state funding, um, we've submitted this spreadsheet. And I believe you all got a copy of that. And if you didn't, I can make sure that happens. Uh, Terry had sent that to everybody. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. Yeah, so uh, Chief Brown has that. Okay. And so uh, their, their board at East Montpelier all have copies of that. And I apologize for not having that. My copier wasn't working. <laughs> so, um, but I will definitely make sure that you have that. And basically, what Manager Sheffler come up with and says, okay, how do we make this fair and equal, but not kill the smaller towns and communities? So what he came up with, and he looked at some funding, is that he used the uh, grand list, and which changes incrementally over the you know the years and over ten years. I believe East Montpelier's portion would be about thirty-seven hundred dollars. So that is on a sliding scale that goes with your grand list. So if your grand list slides less. Your payment goes down. If it goes more, it goes up a little bit. But it is most fair for like the smaller towns like Roxbury, Roxbury that doesn't have a huge grand list. And so they were really struggling with a, a considerable payment like that. So with that part, that checked the box and allowed us to be able to say, okay, we're like saving for a fire truck in the next 10 years so that we don't get whacked with the, uh, the cost. So we went out for an RFQ, press for a quote, we ran into the three major companies, uh, Motorola, Harris, and Tate. So Harris and Tate did not respond to it, to the request. Motorola was the only one, and they came in at approximately $3.5 million. Now everybody's like, holy crap, how do we pay for that? So that's why we uh, applied for the state funding, so that we could upgrade everything, put in place this uh, replacement plan, and that 10 years from now, when Chief and I are sitting here, we don't have to come back to the board and say, guess what? We need $3.5 million. It's not going to happen. So we're, we looked at this very responsibly and as a step forward. Now, as we develop the, uh, the plan for this of a replacement, we were confronted with a lot of technology. 
people are like, oh, let's go cellular. Let's, everybody knows once you get out of the main villages, you have no cellular capability. So our portables, if they relied on cell phones, one, they're not developed to go inside a fire with a cell phone. You can't see, you can't have that big glove, you can't do that, and you can't talk out. So really, we did some uh, uh, conversations with uh, AT&T and Verizon. They both said that cellular technology would not be here for another 10 years. So when we developed the system, we actually put in the ability, one, for a mixed mode, to interface with the older technology, pagers and, and radios, so that we would not say, oh, sorry, you have to change out all your radios and become huge uh, expense to everybody. But we also said, okay, we want it to be LTE compliant or compatible so that we can upgrade once that system comes into place. So we did that. We also well, were confronted with, hey, what about fiber optics? That's the latest and greatest thing. So we talked with CB Fiber. And they're not quite there yet. They're still trying to figure out. There, there's a lot of miles to lay. But we also checked with uh, Consolidated. We we're like, hey, listen, what's it going to cost us? Let's get our ducks in a row. Let's, let's, let's get this done. Well, we found out to do the 13 towers, it's going to be $110,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Spread it out amongst all the towns. And the committee were like, oh, we, we can't do that. <laughs> so what we did is we, we stayed with E-Lines. Which is the standard for radio tower connect connectivity through consolidated. And we kept that. So, what we also did is okay, how do we make it a little more economical, but maximize a public private partnership? So, we sat down with Velco. Velco has been fantastic. So, a couple of our radio sites did not have generators. Thanks to Velco, we've made a connection to the generator. We have uh, that backup power in place. They also allowed us to put a, a radio stuff in their cabinets and their their uh, their buildings, so it becomes more secure. You know, it's more heated and cooled in the whole nine yards. And they're like, anything we can do to help, we're going to do it for you. So they offered space on their towers. They gave us pretty much car blanche. Uh, we also explored AT and T in Chelsea. We're going to add a, a tower in Chelsea for the Washington and Williamstown end of the system. That will balance that out. AT&T has, has said, we'll give you free uh, position on the tower. So we're like, oh, that's a bonus. So we're really trying to maximize the savings and really push the public-private uh, partnerships. Um, tonight, I'm just coming to give you an update because Chief Brown wanted us to come in and say, hey, listen, if you got any uh, questions, we'll try to answer it. If not, I'll get back to you or Chief Rudy will get back to you. But basically, that is in a nutshell of what Capital Fire Mutual Aid is doing to upgrade your radio system to make it safer for both fire and EMS folks. So, oh, <laughs> go ahead. I had a general question about something you had said earlier that the um, state dispatching system attrition rate was 80%. Was yep. that functionality or staff? Staff. 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 Yep. So they cannot keep the staffing, they're losing their folks to, to private. So municipalities and, and just the private industry is taking those folks there. Thank you. Uh -oh. Actually, you, you go ahead, Seth. Oh, okay. Oh. So um, you talked about the upgrade being 3.5 million. Yep. And that 3.5 million, is that going to come out of the $11 million um, state? Yeah. So what, the, what the state did, and we testified at the uh, state level, is that they allotted 6.3 million okay. first round of grants to get yep. things going. They wanted shovel-ready projects. And yep. we have a shovel-ready project. Yep. We are just about as shovel-ready as you can get. And we cover all the bases. Some of the things that, that go the government ops said that we needed to do is have a continuity operations plan, have uh, dispatching policies, procedures, have existing contracts that are in place. And you're currently in a four-year contract. So yep. you are, you're, you're good. So you're not going to get a, a jacked up rate other than paying it forward to into the savings the capital cost. The new yeah, but OK, so we already pay or the fire department already pays you the 20,000 a year. It's yeah. probably more than that. It's a little more than that. Yeah. So your dispatching costs with yeah. the city of Montpelier is separate yeah. from the infrastructure costs. OK, so, we have to okay, so you're talking. OK, I get it. Yeah. So we pay whatever we pay for the dispatching costs. Now, what's the thirty-seven hundred dollars in front? So yes. that is your savings plan to replace yeah, the equipment in ten years. 
So, so just we like, pay that every year to to you? Yes. It's a capital, it's just a capital account. Right. That's there right. is no capital plan currently. Right, right. That's okay. been the problem right along is how to come up with the resources to replace replace this old dying radio system. But you're yeah. trying you you've got a state grant for someone. So yeah. so we apply for the state apply. grant. We heard from them today. Uh -huh. They asked for some more information. Okay. We supplied it to them right off. And we're waiting for them. We should hear on the 25th how we did well. And how much do you think you'll get out of that? I'm optimistic we have an excellent plan. We actually actually paid money to Televate to help draft a plan so that we met each yeah. criteria. So you could get all. We, we could, could get all. That's all, the yeah. whole. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole. But they still need the 3700 because that's the money that's going into to, to build a new rate. That's right. 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 The yeah. capital plan is going to be a requirement of the grant. Yeah. They all go back to the state. And right. right. Well, we don't want you back here in 10 years. The, the governor's like, I don't want you back. I understand. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually very, very fiscal. Uh, it it would be irresponsible to not come up with a plan. So everyone that belongs to the capital uh, system yep. that subscribes to it will be paying a portion of capital money moving forward. Well, That's of right. those who use the system. Use the users, right. There are some users, uh, members that don't use the system. Oh, okay. So, so there's 20 communities yeah. that would be directly impacted by the system. Now, we have... I mean, this has been a problem, I know, with the waste system. Will you have members drop out because they have to give money for the capital? So we will be back probably in December Yeah, if we are awarded this grant for uh, some sort of committal. Yeah, okay. That's so, a good idea because... Yeah. Slight force come and go. And so our lawyer, you're looking, at, you're looking at something you wouldn't want to necessarily get out of the mutual right. aid system on this. It'll be down to either you use the radio system or yeah. you would go. The problem if you pick to go down your own road, you would have to buy your own tower, buy your own radio. Yeah, but buy some, your own some some uh, municipalities go with the uh, state sure. police one. The sheriff too. So yeah. so the state police is going away. Yeah, the state. Oh, that's going to go away. That's yeah. So they, they can no longer do the sustainable model. Oh, and so okay. that's what kind of drove yeah. this. So okay. they're, they're actually shedding 110 communities saying, listen, you got to find some place. Oh, no out. kidding. Yeah. But there's been a they tremendous, to do it for a long time. Yeah, there's been a huge equity issue. There's a, you know, I'm in Woodbury. We're paying 24,000 for dispatching this year in towns like Williston are getting it for free. Right. Right. From the, which is an equity issue. Police. Right. So that's, right. That's, that's, right. that's been my beef is that, yeah, this is something we all should be paying for. Well, there needs to be a more unified system right. that everyone subscribed to. That the, they paid, you know, reasonable yeah. cost. Everyone paid into it. Right. But that's not what's been going on. The no. bonus part of no. this is that you guys own it. You are a part owner of the system. Capital Fire will own this yeah. equipment. So yeah. Montpelier is a producer. Yeah. They agreed to do that because one Capital Fire could not apply for it because there was limitations. Uh, CBPSA did not qualify. Montpelier says we have the bulk of it. We'll be the fiduciary for this yeah. grant. At the end, they'll do an MOU and, and turn the, all the equipment over to the uh, Capital Fire Mutual Aid System. Well, so let, let me ask a clarification on that because I'm sure you're aware uh, there is no East Montpelier Town Fire Department. There is a nonprofit that we get our just like we are. Uh, right. So uh, who's a member of Capital West? Is it the Town of East Montpelier or is it East Montpelier Fire Department? It's a nonprofit. It's town of East Montpelier. Town of East Montpelier. Right. By statute in 1970s. Okay. And you all voted to get in way back when. Very good. Thank you. But the, the payments go through the fire department. So. Right. We did research that yeah. and it is the town that's a member. Thank you. So. All right. So I have a question about how much you're coming in with a technical report and how much you're coming in with a report on planned administrative structural changes. I mean, you're partially talking about the uh, the closing of the state dispatch system, uh, but you you also mentioned the integration of the various Montpelier dispatch centers and uh, the redundancy there that came about as, as you're aware through the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority uh, and and all the discussions that that happened uh, with with that organization. Are are you talking about further integration of the actual dispatching work? And, and not just upgrading of the equipment here. Can you, can you tell us about that? So I will tell you a little bit about it. So the, the city of Montpelier and city of Barry said, listen, we need to be become more integrated in our dispatching services because for some reason, if we needed to send our dispatchers in Barry to Montpelier, because we shut down, 
they need to be able to say, okay, this is a screen, this is a, the console, this is familiar to me, right. it should be seamless. Yep. So the city of Barrie and city of Montpelier have agreed and they have uh, entered in a contract to be delivered in about nine weeks uh, to replace all their consoles in both stations. So basically their same equipment, same furniture, same everything, so that if we had to put them together, we could do that. Mm -hmm. That is no cost to the users. You are currently in a contract. And that city of Montpelier and city of Barrie, both city managers and their council said, we're going to take this on. This is our infrastructure. So that was no cost to you both. And that was approximately about $750,000 to do that on both cities' commitment to this process. So I don't know if that answered your question. Later on, I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years. It will happen in five years. My, so my question was, the the money that you'll be uh, spending to upgrade the communication system yep. is that envisioning or does it require any change in administration of the dispatch other than you know, the state police nothing right going on. on okay thank you we're really making some changes in how we might allocate um infrastructure like to add data lines of how we spread those out among the users uh -huh. that that makes some of that may change and who actually collects the money well to be determined based on to try to make it more right now we got a system of volunteers trying to i just got off the select boards very familiar with all the struggles we're having right so um trying to manage a very large amount of money and mm -hmm. so i can foresee some changes in that structure to make it all work okay. what those exactly are going to be will be determined by the group to say what work what is everybody comfortable with yeah. okay. i have my ideas but whether that's exactly what's going to happen I don't know. Okay. thank you so you're looking for tonight is uh, just a letter. letter yep. support. Yeah, we sent yep. a letter to Terry, who was a letter of support saying yep. you support the application yep. and move forward in that. And basically yep. that's just a, a feather in our hat, you know. And, right. And it's, you know, a, it's a unity issue with the with uh, the state. They're looking to say should yeah. with everybody best. No, I get it. We're supportive of the procedure so far. Right. right. Gina, we had a member of the public who made a public records request for information related to this. Um, do you know whether that person expressed any any thoughts on it? Yeah, okay. Okay. So as part of that public re records request, which I was copied on for some reason, I saw that, uh, that Toby, I believe, had signed the same letter on behalf of the fire department. Oh, we did? Yeah. So... So we're not undercutting our fire department by any means. I think we just can both standing shoulder to shoulder with them. I actually met with them last week. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I yeah, I moved to um to authorize uh the chair to sign this letter of support for the capital region communication system project system project on behalf of the select board. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. There we go. Okay. I got a copy right here. I can sign. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Complicated. Yeah. yeah. Made it crystal clear. <laughs> and for all the work you've done, it's a complicated issue. We're not. Yeah. Okay. No, no. No, but it, it's well, it probably needed. Yeah. I want to push the button. Make better work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I know it. I know we've talked about it for a while. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys see our sign-in sheet? Uh, no, oh, we did not. Sorry. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you. That just makes it easier for a note taker. You bet. <laughs> Good for me. Get sick tonight. Say twelve. Yes. Yes. All right. That's fine. One piece of paper, Bella. <laughs> Hold it on. Again, thank you folks for having us. No, thank you for coming in. Transparency. If you would like us to come back to the same thing, we absolutely would love to. And I, I anticipate good things with the grant. And yeah. if we do, then I would ask to come back and uh update you and and, and yeah. look for further support. Uh, if uh, you look job for good, they get some money because we don't have to pay this. Is, yeah, we've been oh, trying yeah. to figure out a way to spread a two or three million dollar cost over. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, 
pretty hard to do. Do not you the guy, am I? <laughs> do you yeah. anticipate any new infrastructure being built, any new sheds for transmitters, for example, as a part of this project? So I, I do not. I okay. believe that we were acting two additional towers, uh -huh. but Norwich University has agreed to, to uh, give us location with a uh, generator okay. in space on the roof. Okay. And the other one is the AT&T tower that's proposed in the Beacon Hill and Chelsea. Okay. So okay. I don't anticipate it. They've already agreed to give us space, uh -huh. at least free, and that's because the governor has pushed them to do that for public safety. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time. I'm going to get my pen back. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So the next item on our agenda is allocation of ARPA funds to CV provider. Um, I believe it was Judith and Kyle were going to work on the language for the... We did for the contract. Contract. For the contract. That's something that we have a September 15th deadline oh, yeah. to, um, to get in to. if uh, we're going to yeah. um, commit to get our money doubled Matching. by the state. Yeah. And uh, Judith and I have talked uh, about it and shared ideas. I'm afraid we do not have a finished contract to show you tonight, but um, we're prepared to discuss just in principle what we're, we're um, wanting to make the changes. And what we'd like to do with, uh, with your leave is uh, vote on authorizing us to complete the contract and send it out to you tomorrow in a, a way that you can, can look at and say have 24 hours to decide whether or not you want to have an emergency select board meeting, which we could do on online and uh, discuss anything. And if we don't hear from you in that time, then we would consider it approved. Okay. And, and just some of the changes that um, are in, changes between what was proposed. Um, there are some, um, there was an addition to the indemnification clause that our attorney recommended and as um, that we've included. Um, there's some whereas clauses that were not necessary and didn't really add and added to some confusion actually. Yeah. So we suggested deleting those. Um, there, um, there's some you know small um, consistency changes in terms of language in the document. Um, there's the section on identifying the um, populations or the areas for funding uh, for this um, um, service to be provided. And so what we they proposed a template and um, I suggested strike, but there were some that didn't apply to us, um, but keeping the others, for example, school, town offices, things like that. Right. Um, so, and the amount that we discussed was a hundred thousand dollars. We just want to confirm. Is that what we're thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Um, so it's so, a little uncertain because yeah. we don't know how many of those underserved households they actually got to take advantage of it. So yeah. We just have to go with the statistics we had, which mm -hmm. was almost fifty percent. So that was on the survey. Yeah. They did or whatever did it. So. so those are kind of like the big picture. Yeah. Um, and and just again, some of the whereas language. Um, added questions or uncertainty regarding the eligibility for ARPA funding. So we wanted to remove that. So there was no um, doubt. It didn't raise red flags that um, it would create confusion, so. Okay. So getting back to the original thought, the 100,000, did you, uh, have we identified what underserved is when it comes to the public aspect? The, oh, the uh, oh, not the public, the, the um, nonprofit. You you can, that's what Appendix A is. You can identify it. You can okay. spe specify what that is. Weren't, weren't we going to try to find out more information about that? Well, like when the, uh, yeah, the senior center. Senior center, yeah. that's a nonprofit. Right. How is that, I mean, does that qualify for just a hookup, the $1,600? Remember, because it's, it's a lot of money okay. to get there. Yeah, it's a lot of money to and get there. The right. We talked about that last meeting. I yeah. thought somebody was going to look into that, but maybe we didn't clearly assign that to anybody. So, did you hear anything more? I about haven't that? heard anything. Okay. So, but if we, my suggestion is 
attachment A or appendix A, I forget what the heading is, but if you wanted to identify an organization, a nonprofit organization, specify that organization. So add it to, you know, the elementary school, add it to, you know, the town office, mm -hmm. specifically add town it if that's college. what you want to do it. Right. The thing is that it, it might cost fifty thousand dollars just to connect the senior center right two years early. And maybe yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah. And don't do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> because they're because they're just going to pay for the actual hookup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the ARPA funds can pay for. We could, we could um, perhaps offer the money to them to serve the private uh, underserved or unserved people that they have identified and then say that we will come with a possible follow-up. Give us a little bit more time to gather that information. Well, the thing is, what you said before is that we can always give money back. If if we had identified the underserved people in the amount of money, mm -hmm. we could give the money back to uh, ARPA or wherever we, from CV Fiber because we're going to commit to giving a certain amount to CV Fiber right, right. now. Uh -huh. Right. But you said That's there was an opportunity to give take some of that money back if it's, if we're not going to use it all up. Right. Yeah, if it's not being used for that purpose, then right. it would be returned. Right. We have a time frame to do that. Now, would we give the money? We'd have to give the money back also on the matching funds. Because tonight we have to commit yeah. by the 15th right. yeah. a certain yeah. amount of money right. that will qualify for the matching yeah. funds. Yeah. So say it's $200,000, but say it only costs one one hundred and sixty thousand to do mm -hmm. these hookups. Mm -hmm. So $40,000, 20000 back to our, but 20000 back to the entity that gave us the money. Right. So, yes. So that that's that's one end of it. What I was suggesting is that we appropriate the hundred thousand or whatever we choose tonight, mm -hmm. and we go ahead and enter into the contract with yep. them as as we work out. Yeah. Reserving the right to come back within a short time and say uh, we'd like to modify not the amount, but who gets served by this money, and that way. We will have met the September 15th deadline for the state, so our money will be matched. But we have a little bit of time to, to find out some more information before we make our final decision on that. Does that make sense? Well, it sounds like there's pretty strict parameters on mm -hmm. what that money can be used for. It's only hookups for underserved people and nonprofits. We Is that don't correct? we don't understand the nonprofit side of things, I don't think. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> Regarding the answer. Yeah. Unknown. Yeah. But for the individual, the underserved, we underserved, we certainly do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if tonight we say uh, we're going to make a contract, allocate a yeah. hundred k mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. and uh, have it serve the underserved and unserved mm -hmm. with the right to come back within I don't know thirty days and say we would like to adjust the allocation a little bit, yeah. to include the nonprofit. I would just be concerned about the right to come back. I would, I mean, if we're going to get, if we want to get that matching fund, I don't know if we leave ourselves open, I agree. you know, wiggle, wiggle room, you know. Well, we, yeah, I don't know if you can. We're still yeah. committing the 100,000. And then it's who it gets spent on. <laughs> it's, it's going to be ARPA eligible. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree completely with the concept. Yeah. It's just some gray areas in there. Yeah. I'm a little concerned. Is that the amendment date control or does the original date control? Because we would be coming in with an amendment. So does that impact yeah. the amendment would the not deadline? amend 100,000? How do, do, you, do you know that? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, <laughs> does it amend our commitment? Uh -huh. Does it amend our eligibility for the matching funds? I don't know the answer to that. No, I don't either. I have one just really simple. Probably Go ahead. Question. Why are you so concerned about the senior center? It's just it's just a nonprofit that we qualify for the money. Well, and because we're looking possibly. to make sure that we can spend this money. What if yeah, but on, what if they are just as happy to go with uh, consolidated communications? They're not because it's going to cost so much money for them to hook up. They've already said the power line go right by there. No, no, they have to. What what the cable does is goes by right, but there's a junction box like a thousand feet down the road, and they say they can only hook up to that junction box. Run the cable back to that. And it's going to cost seventy thousand or something. The phone company. I get. I I have cable connection. Not cable. Excuse me. I have Wi-Fi connection in Woodbury in two camps. 
and I use the holiday community. This is, this is what Gene Troy, this is what Gene Troy, Gene Troy is, the director yeah. of the senior center. Yeah, we're just going by what he told. Oh, that, that I, I don't know. Wonder if he knows that he has other options. Well, yeah. he's a pretty smart guy. I would think he would. I mean, I. Okay, yeah, I mean, I have consolidated too, but it's not very good. <laughs> I have consolidated, it's not very good. Well, it depends on what they have for lines. Yeah. Okay. And how many people are using to use it there? Yeah. It isn't that I'm specifically worried about the senior system. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm worried about how many of those organizations qualify for this right. money. Okay. And can we just, what? What does qualify just to hook up? Do they? Okay, the town garage, for instance, does not have any internet. That would qualify, it should. Mm -hmm. But do they, are they going to build a line all the way to it? Or yeah. I guess so. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the line's going by, then we'll pay for the hookup, or the ARPA money will pay for the hookup. But the ARPA money is not going to pay to, to put the line all the way there. So, Mike, just going back to this, and you're looking at the bigger picture, not just like at the senior center. Yeah, but no. The senior center is an example. If they it ever is. had a phone line, ever had a landline, you can still go to consolidated communications. The landline's there. Yeah, but okay, but these people hey, are not dumbbells. Not They're not dumbbells. They they probably looked into that. Okay, I mean, we all have looked into our internet options. Okay, so this is a better <laughs> this is a better option, from my understanding. So the boilerplate appendix one that was given to us yeah uh includes language like um the town reserves the right to review specific plans for construction and connections and it also says the town wishes to connect its community facilities to enhance the provision of government services as quickly as possible which may include but not it but is not limited to facilities such as the following town office public works garage east montpelier elementary school community and cultural centers yeah. So we could just go with yeah. that. Yeah. Right. And we then, could just go with that. And then we yeah. will be in communication with That's them about the details. Yeah. Okay. So let's just okay. do the 100,000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're flying a little bit by the seat yeah. of our pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. To get on the schedule because it's just, yeah. yeah it's, to, to be to be fair, this hundred thousand is something that we've talked about for a long time. Oh no, I under, understood. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we're also giving more money than most communities that we've gotten in touch with. Well, that's true. And, and, and because they've been more conservative, that's true. But they don't seem to be as versed in the legal language that we're seem to be talking. Right? Like, right. They're all like, oh, okay. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like I think we'll do the hundred thousand, but I think it's. So do you little... want to do 80 instead of 100? No, I like that round number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if and we... I really want to make sure that all the underserved people yeah, yeah. that we're providing, yeah, I mean, this right. is it's public yeah. money and this is what we should do. Right. No. And so to use that old retail phrase, the more you spend, the more you save. The, <laughs> the more we spend, the more we get in matching funds for the town. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's, a, it's an aggressive, somewhat aggressive ask, yeah. but I think we should do it. Yeah. So I think maybe we should do two motions. One motion to appropriate the hundred thousand for CV fiber out of our ARPA funds, and then the second motion to approve this contract. How would that be worded? Um, the contract. Uh, um, as in in print to approve approve the contract. No, to authorize Judith and me mm -hmm. to complete the contract for the town administrator to sign, unless. Uh, subject to it going out to you before noon tomorrow and no concerns being raised by noon on Wednesday. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Sure. Sounds, me. Sounds good. Okay. So first motion, I, I move to allocate the $100,000 yep. of our ARPA money to CB Fiber for the purposes of building out our, our fiber infrastructure to underserved and unserved areas. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And then I move to authorize uh, Judith and me to complete the contract uh, for, with CV Fiber regarding the $100,000 and to authorize the town administrator to sign it with the condition that it be uh, sent out to you all by noon tomorrow. And uh, you have 24 hours from then to uh, raise concerns and call an emergency meeting if there's something we need to discuss. With the understanding that our deadline is September 15th, which is Thursday. 
Second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for not being beautiful. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you for working on that. Um so Guthrie's here and we're on time, actually. Despite ourselves. <laughs> Uh, County Road Project Update. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Trying to get into the light a little bit. Yeah. Where uh, are you anyway? <laughs> Where I are you, buddy? Am, I, I am. Is that better? Oh, yes. that's much better. <laughs> Sorry. I'm walking. Beautiful moon. <laughs> are you in Massachusetts? I just pulled in. Yep. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Well, found a shipping container. Good background, right? Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah, he's making wicked good progress. I don't know if Gina shared any of the pictures with you guys or not. Um, he got the guardrails out on Saturday and got a uh, silt fence set up and perimeter fence. Um, and today he got the old pipe completely out. Uh, they did the dig away at the edge of the road where they have to put new base material in to widen or the guardrails. Um, so there, I think they made really good progress for the first day. Tomorrow looked pretty wet. Uh, so hopefully he can continue to make progress, but they have the base almost all in for the actual pipe to set in there. So uh, the contractor to pour the head walls, uh, sounds like he's supposed to be making some headway with him towards the end of the week. So hopefully in theory, hopefully the road would be open maybe Wednesday afternoon when they get done. Uh, if not, definitely, I would say by the end of the day, when, uh, Thursday. So that's that's about what I can tell you on that. Uh, so I'm assuming that would land them probably up at the other culvert, uh, the project, their site two, uh, the end of the week, doing the same thing they did on Saturday, which would be site prep, meaning pull the guardrails, silt fence, and all of that. Uh, and then they would start that over a week from today. And so. the other one would be done with the head walls? I don't know if the head walls would be completely done, but they can still put up the, um, they can put up barrels and such. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. So does everyone understand what's going on is they're gonna put the culvert in without the head walls, then open the road and then do the head walls after the road. While the road's open. open. Right. Yeah. They'll just narrow it up right there. So there's still room for cars to go through. They can still work on the right. head walls, concrete head walls. And that's a good thing because they can do the, the cars will be doing the compaction, which gains a little time on the whole thing because mm. the compaction is really important mm. before the pavement happens. So you don't get the big dip in the pavement when the thing mm. settles. Mm. For sure. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Uh, you really don't want to backfill the head walls for about two or three days Yeah. Uh, just, uh, just to let the concrete do its initial curing and then yeah. let it build some strength because last thing you want to do is push that over as a contractor green con green concrete is not good to backfill so yeah so we're getting complaints i guess uh somebody told me there was somebody got lost five tires or something and, mm -hmm. but so the, the question about the, the complaint, I was talking to somebody who happens to be a civil engineer, and I guess I wasn't aware that part of the problem is, is was this, like, it's not actually gravel because we can't get gravel anymore. Is that what's going on? No, no. The gravel that you get is, is stone that's Yes, blasted. but it's like from way down yeah, because there aren't any gravel stone. pits yeah. anymore. And, and he said, the person I talked to said, well, you're lucky that you're actually getting pavement over it because they're actually paving or doing roads with that stuff, that blasted stuff and not putting pavement over it in some places. And no, we do it. Yeah. answered my questions about that very well. Oh, we do it in East Montpelier. We, we put I, blasted stuff. I suggest we, we ask him about it. Okay. Guthrie? Yep. We, I'm sorry, what are we asking him? <laughs> about about what, uh, the, what we can get and what we're putting on the road. Yes, here. thank you. <laughs> so, yes. There's uh, pit gravel, which we do not use, haven't used, I would say, since the 90s as a town. And then there's crushed granite and crushed ledge, which is stone that's actually 
blasted out of the earth that's solid or or is tailings from headstones that gets crushed down into material and we try not to use anything over one inch in size most of it's three quarter inch meaning the biggest stone in it would be uh, one inch or three quarter inch in mud season we use a very small amount of inch and a half and that would only be used in our absolute worst spots um, just because it does lock it right up pretty quick and then we cover it over um, before we do our first grading or while we do our first grading and then uh, but right now like what has been put on the county road um, was crushed ledge um, so it was blasted out and then ran through a crusher crushed down to three quarters of an inch so it's everything from three quarters of an inch and smaller um so that's it what it is is you get better angles on the stones so your compaction rates become better the wear surface on the top of it becomes better it stays together longer than stones that have rounded edges that's the pit gravel is round yes it's yeah. been washed by the river yeah and it was deposited by Deposited by, by glaciers. Glaciers. Right. And we still when we still have that kind of gravel, but doesn't pack like the crushed stuff. Okay. Well, I thought and, okay, so my question was I was under the impression that we didn't even have that gravel anymore. Oh no. Okay. Because I was gonna say, you know, maybe we should communicate you, that, but if that's not the case, then you we can should cut crush that gravel roll out because okay. it's washed. You can... it's different sizes though. Oh, okay. You know, it could be this big, it could be this big. Okay. Well, you size it those yeah, yeah, you can screen it has their own cut. Yeah, and they screen it. They have, yeah, screen it. Yeah. If you screen it, that gives you a uniform size. So okay. when he's when he says inch and a half uh -huh. or three quarters, they have a screen at that size. Okay. Inch and a half and smaller. Okay. Yeah, so, so there's a strategic reason for it. And okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you for answering my question, Becky. But as far as the complaints go, I mean, the most recent complaint on, on Front Porch Forum is someone who is outraged that uh, there are detours away from the road at a time that it's being worked on. Yeah. And you know, I don't know how we can do road work without putting up detours. Well, you just have to worry about town meeting, that's all then. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about one day. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, you have, have to, to push be back. Realistic. You have to be realistic. You have to push back sometimes. Right. Yeah. I would think a business that's right in the area where this work is happening right now, Morse has been nothing but yeah. wonderful to work with mm -hmm. through this right. entire process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, their their latest Facebook post actually thanked us for the signs that um that road the road foreman took there for, you know, the to kind of guide people to to their farm. So um mm -hmm. they I think their words were the town created some great signs for them. So um, so just want to thank Morse Farm because they have been, you know, it is, this is a significant impact to, the, to them and yeah. they've been wonderful to work with. Us. But you got to remember, Burn Morse is from the era where they used to roll the roads. Right. Mm -hmm. And the snow was this deep. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then mud was that deep too. <laughs> so this is a huge improvement. <laughs> Burr also gave us a nice call out on front. Yeah, he did. That was really nice. <laughs> yes. All right. Then, well, thank you, guys. Do you want to talk about the guardrail? Uh, All right. Yeah. So apparently, originally, Doug had put it in the plans that they were going to reuse the existing guardrail. So in the original bid, um, it has it in there that they were going to remove the rail. And then they have it that they were going to reinstall the rail. Um, and I think there was a few pieces to be replaced, maybe a few panels. Um, there was posts that were completely bent over now and it was in rough shape to say the least it was bad um, i imagine if you went back and looked at like google, google earth images along that i i could have pulled those up for you i didn't really give that a thought until just now actually um but it would have been really obvious how bad they really were um so long story short i feel we should just put in new ones and be done with it uh, not put some new and use a few pieces of the old um so all new is about 16,000. That's the new everything anchors, which comes to about $30 and 75 cents a foot installed. And uh, it would actually come in a little under that because the removal was already in there, but the, and the reinstall is in there and the few panels. So it shouldn't, shouldn't come to 16,000. Um, right. There's a little bit of credit to go back onto that because the, because of the, reinstall and whatnot so we some of that was already accounted for more or less some of that portion of the project um, 
I, I, I would like to see it all go to bright rail and be new. Yeah. I tried to get pricing today from another company and I was unsuccessful. They didn't get back to me yet today. I struggle to believe that they're going to be anywhere under that $30 and 75 cents a foot. And then scheduling it in is a whole nother world. When you've already got a company coming to do the other ones, they can just do those in, which is uh, Lafayette. Yeah. They're coming to do the ones up at site number two as it is. So I think you could add these ones in at that same, that, that's who we got the prices from. It was mm -hmm. from the, from well, through, through Blue Mountain, but because they were already coming to the other site. Probably you ought to get them to do the other. Right. If it just makes sense for them to do all, all four yes. pieces of rail at once. Do it. Rather than getting a price from another contractor and then trying to get them to schedule a different portion of the same that's, job. That's so. not worth it. <laughs> right. It's not worth the hassle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we do anything? What's that? We need to do anything? Well, it's an overage, right? It's going to be around, it's less uh, than 16,000, but it's overage. So it'll just be a run over. Uh, yeah, I think so. But we do have some credit too because of what we. Yeah, 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 no, there's credit from the asphalt. Oh, so, right. Well, that's a different, right? It's a different profit. Right, right. That's right. So, just, what I need is to know that Fred has the okay to add that in yes. to the job, which yes. makes perfect sense to me, but I can't yeah. make that call without you guys. No, no, it does to me. I mean, yeah. do we, I think we just do it a consensus. That's yeah. okay to add that in as an extra cost. Yeah. Because the old guardrail is crappy. Yeah. The new guardrail, that's pretty reasonable. And Lafayette's coming to do the one site. I think yeah. we should contract to do both. And Fred can add that in as an extra cost. Don't get me wrong. There was a time when rail was way less than $30.75 a foot. Right? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. But, but those, hasn't it all gone out? A lot of things are different. <laughs> yeah. So go for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. I think everyone okay. agrees. Yeah. yeah, I'll call Fred in the morning and let him know in on that. He already yeah. said that he didn't know how he was going to save anything that was taken out. So, no, yeah, junk sounds good. Okay, not junk, recycle. We recycle it. I know. I don't and need any guardrail. I I could be a recycling place, but we don't need any. So we have don't call. <laughs> okay. I have to see your certificate of recirculation. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we discussed a year or two ago the possibility of getting pre-rusted guardrail for our historic culvert on Center Road. Uh, Pre-rusted. Yeah, it, it, that's what was recommended to us by historical preservation people. Uh, is there a possibility that we can sell this old stuff at a premium? Sell it to Cal. There you go. For historical purposes, must be stuff. They do. They get on Max Gray Road. Okay, hang on to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You have an in. <laughs> so just to put it out there, um, Lafayette does sell retired interstate rail, which are long straight panels usually when an interstate gets rehab. And there are life years left in it. And it's not like the stuff that we had been priced anyway, the season, um, yeah. even though yeah. it is weathered or whatever. But uh, it, I, I just think it makes sense to start fresh. Mm -hmm. But some people don't like the look of the bright galvanized <laughs> guardrail, right? I, I personally I'm not like going to tell them to close their eyes when they drive through. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I There's a sea tour clearly marked. Okay. So does anybody want the seasoned guardrail? No. No. Oh, good. <laughs> Great. Okay. We good? Mm -hmm. We need anything else out of Guthrie? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Guthrie. Thank you. All right. Okay. Appointments. And we're right on time. So with this, this is the municipal assistant to officially appoint her as the assistant town treasurer and the assistant town clerk. Yeah. So, so moved. Yeah. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Uh,
the the warrant warrant so right here right? We already did the other business right yeah yeah we did the other business hey i only have one question on the warrants press ever press uh, ej prescott what do we would we buy there it's that's where we buy uh culverts roll tab okay right? so the 16 gate culvert right oh is that on you yeah i mean yeah that's what it would be yeah okay, okay. I just so, learned. Yep. that's what they sell we have that's a tax fine. credit on someone who just started as an employee yeah that was there before but yeah okay yeah oh as a as a resident yes yeah i was as a resident got it correct. got it yeah. okay. just happens to be getting paid now yeah <laughs> i'm the only one mm -hmm. Was that the oldest truck that needed the um, pipe you were talking about this morning? That Frank's truck? Yes. Yeah. And then the other truck got a rear brake job. So well, that's kind of normal wear and tear. Yeah, 70,000 miles on the first set of brakes. Wow, that's pretty darn good. Yep. Are those drum brakes all the way around on that? Yep. Oh, they're they're just a drum. Yep. An ordinary drum with yeah air brake. Yep. And the only reason that we even dug into them was because three of the slack adjusters wouldn't adjust anymore. So oh, it yeah. was just yeah, yeah. it was at that point. The two on the driver's side usually go first because of the conveyor for the material yeah. spreading. Yeah. It just kind of trickles that little bit of extra material in the winter. Now those do those brakes automatically adjust? Generally, yeah. Until you know, they yeah. start to get sticky, and then yeah. they are yeah. fun. Yeah. So I should sign this thing for the old, looks like a certificate yeah. of appointment. Yeah. yeah. This is a letter, this is that. We pass it down. We got all my stuff on the top. Okay. Um, all these three can go down there. Right?
Okay. Okay. Uh, we're done with other business. The only thing left is personnel matter. Do we want to take the town administrator report? Oh report? yeah. What do we got looked on? Let's see. What's on there, Gina? That we need. You're taking some time off. You did the warrants. Um. We've got some future meetings. Back to our first and third schedule. Yeah. October. Next yeah. November. Yeah. I don't see anything that exciting here, though I'm not trying to put you down, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not exciting a time with me. I, okay. I'd be excited for vacation if I were. Where are you going? In? Oh, you know, we're just taking time off. All right. Uh, so I think we're ready to go into potential executive session. And discuss personnel matter. I would move um, that we go into executive session pursuant to one BSA section three thirteen a three to discuss a confidential employment matter, personnel matter. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. With Deirdre, because right, I think this is it for the night. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. I will finish off when we have returned. Give you the rest yeah, of the meeting. I don't want her out there hanging out for it. Adjourn. <laughs> adjourn is going to be part of it. Yeah. Right. With the time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I will pause recording. Recording stopped. So, remove. Oh, Bye. 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 Have a good night, y'all. Good night. Uh, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Let us know when you're ready. You ready? Oh, we don't need to vote to get out. Okay. okay. And David Delcor, he's not lurking in the. He has he left. Okay. So, so no oh, action no. taken. <laughs> and the next thing we have to discuss is begins with A. Um, I make a motion and we adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All those in favor, please. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs>